Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Napoleon Total back again with some Shogun 2. For this time, I scrum over the Far East, and we are playing once again as the Ching. In the last turn, we just took Hoki, and we're going to peacefully occupy it. Uh, Delta Bu Ching has leveled up, and you are going to see a lot of re re some uh, a little bit repeat from um, the last episode. But yes, um, our faction leader has leveled up, so I'm going to give him um, Inspiring Leader, Honor, and Command, I think. But yes. Um, you can see here, uh, I was deciding what to pick, and that was from the last episode, so um, that's a little bit unfortunate. Um, yeah, there's a lot of nothing new. Um, but yes, as you can see, for those who haven't been watching the last episode, um, this is basically what happened. I was selecting which unit I was, and I eventually cancelled it, and I replaced them with um, rating, actually no, not rating, um, Offense, Honor, and Inspiring Leader. Because both of them give me plus one command, and plus one loyalty if general, blah blah blah, stuff like that. So yes. Um. Yep, um, now we can officially move on. Uh, there's a geisha right there once again, but um, there's nothing I re really can do with that because the number of assassins I have is already at max. And uh, yeah, that's a problem. So I really can't recruit an agent, and uh, yeah, that's going to be a big problem. In Korea, on the other side, we have two armies sieging out North Jayola. Je uh, I can technically auto-resolve, but... Um, just not interested to do that. They have a lot of two units of levies, uh, levy swordsmen, levy spearmen, archers, a lancer unit, two artillery pieces, and two generals, so essentially four cavalry units. But um, I think I'm just going to let that slide, and if they do attack me on the battlefield, it's, it's going to be bad for them. On the other side, we are going to be Moving this army, which is not a lot of units, against uh, Central Gong, Go Gogang. Um, and by the way, for those who don't know, I'm definitely pronouncing these names wrong. Um, technically, we can win. We only have seven seven hundred and four. They have a thousand. But um, the enemy is getting reinforced by one general and uh, literally uh, one archer unit, which so it should be manageable. I have a lot of art art artillery pieces. Um, five to be exact, so I'm just gonna fight the battle on the battlefield. As, as you can see, I have one unit of white banner border swordsmen. The rest are mostly cavalry and five units are artillery. Um, most of the cavalry are Manchu Lancers. The, I have three units of uh, mortars, two units of rockets, and we're just gonna be raining hell on the enemy. And eventually the enemy realizes that, so you're gonna see what they do. But we are at this point we're just gonna watch the rockets open fire. Or in this case, reload. And we're gonna hope for the best. I find I kind of find it it's pretty interesting that the rockets disappear after they fire, but yes. Uh, as you can see the the infantry units are gonna stay put, while the cavalry unit for the enemy are gonna charge out. And basically what happens during the rest of the battle which uh, for some reason the footage was corrupted was well, the enemy kept charging out one at a time which is pretty dumb and they keep getting slaughtered by my men the most successful charge was probably this one in the sense that the, act the enemy actually actually um how do I put it um the enemy actually managed to reach my uh, artillery pieces which is impressive assuming consuming the fact for some reason um I didn't see this unit like it literally was invisible until like what, five feet away, and then it was pretty much, they actually did some damage to my artillery pieces. But anyway, we took this settlement. The two enemy armies basically destroyed. Uh, pretty small armies. And we've killed an enemy general, so that's also pretty nice. Now we're gonna repair, and we're gonna have our agent go to South Gong Gongsang. Which basically has no army in it. But anyway, we can technically auto-resolve this settlement, but I'm just not interested to. Three turns to surrender, so that probably means that the enemy is going to be coming out. 
very soon. In Hoki, we're going to continue to move on, but we can't really do that yet, so we have to end the turn and wait for more troops to reach Iwami. And then we're going to have our general, who's on on a boat, two generals to be exact, going to move there and pray for the best. United, United Kingdom, United States uh, are growing bit by bit. The, the biggest problem I have is now with the United States. They have um, Prussia as their, um, their allies, which is not a bad idea. And, well, for us, my allies are the Netherlands, the British, and the French. Which technically, in all theory, they are technically surrounding the United States. So yes. Oh, we have three beautiful children, Tai, Sha, and I. <laughs> I'm definitely pronouncing that wrong. And just to make sure we have a lot more children, we're gonna adopt a lot more children. Um, these are nephews, so yeah, that's I can't really adopt them. One is a nephew, one is an uncle, I think, but I'm not pretty sure. This is a brother, and the other one should be a nephew. I have three beautiful sons, but none of them are going to come to age anytime soon. But we, anyway, our faction leader is going to be campaigning again. I just need to replenish my numbers. Mostly three, one turns. Yeah, one turn. After one turn, I'm just going to be marching on Inabi. Inaba, to be exact. And once again, I don't really care about public order, because... Um, yeah, nothing I can do about public order there. There's nothing I can manage about public order, like, public order is, um, it has been problematic for Shogun 2, but, uh, not really that problematic. Um, at this point, I did bring a lot of, uh, green banner units, which I am going to eventually delete them, because, um, yeah, green banner units take up money. Although, they're quite cheap, but, um, yeah, I'm just gonna mass them. Um, so basically, the the remaining Korean settlements have no armies in them, except for the one to the west. And South Gongyong right here basically is about to be sieged any moment by now by my massive, well, this small army, but it's pretty, still pretty massive. As you can see, I'm trying to do some reforms in terms of building new stuff. And obviously, I don't really want a lot of these barracks because there's... I'm going to turn Korea essentially into a money-building province. Well, money-building country, essentially. Um, because most of Korea is pretty f pretty good. Um, they have a lot of provinces, although I treat provinces mostly the same. Um, I'm it's also good to upgrade Korea with a lot more uh, building slots. I can technically build Korea the way I want to. Um, so yes, that's that. Russia, on the other hand, is mostly built by the Ru um, the Russian Far East is mostly built by the Russians, so I really can't touch that. And if I do, um, it's pretty much gonna end up in a terrible way. We're gonna end the turn. Our generals are moving in, stuff like that. And the Korean Sally out. <laughs> um, so that's that's gonna be great. We're gonna attack them. We're gonna defend ourselves, and um, we're gonna one move up our Manchu Bowmen on this hill. And at first, it doesn't look like a hill until you see the rest of the hill, which is right here. Um, behind, we are desperate. I am trying to move these uh, swordsmen on top of the hill, and. Yep, um, this is a pretty big hill, although it doesn't seem like it right now. Um, you can really see the real height of this hill once you get here. And the hill is actually really pretty big. Uh, one right right behind him I have Manchu Lancers. Oh, sorry. Manchu, um, Manchu Cavalry and um, Rockets. Also, artillery pieces, mortars to be exact. But well, anyway, uh, we're just gonna reach this hill, and um, the enemy decides the enemy army is basically made around um, of half of conscripts. And I'm oh, sorry, what I mean by conscripts is um, the garrison force. A uh, half of them are garrison armies, and the other half is elite troops. 
And what I mean by elite, I mean better than conscripts. They have archers, um, these guard swordsmen, which once again are pretty good looking. These levy swordsmen, um, which are one, which I consider them to be on the same tier as um, these levy units. They have a, um, they have a good cavalry unit, uh, probably the general, and some more levy spearmen, which um, which is a pretty big army. But um, the real fa fighting units are the guards, the guards spearmen, and whatnot. Um, I'm going to charge my cavalry downhill on a heavy. On a charge, and the reason why I'm gonna be doing that is gonna be because the enemy general came way too close, and uh, to a certain extent, he came, he came not only way too close, but he came, yeah, he he was kind of separated from his men, and I'm just gonna help the general out a little bit by literally killing him, and because he did come too close, and so yes, but for the rest of my army, I'm trying to. I'm, I'm not going to move them, which is a mistake, I should have attacked, but anyway, the, en the enemy still is going to lose anyway. Um, the second the enemy general is dead, I'm going to order the full scale retreat of my cavalry, and yes. Eventually, um, I'm going to be using this hill, and after the cavalry retreated, I'm going to be firing some arrows, and when the enemy get too, co too close, I'm going to once again charge down my cavalry, Charge down my infantry, and at this point, we're gonna rout the enemy. Um, the enemy are firing, trying to fire our arrows back, but um, it's not working. Uh, this guard swordsmen are just getting wrecked, and uh, the Korean guard swordsmen are getting wrecked. My white banner uh, border units are just wrecking them, and once again, I've been saying that how white banner border units are, in terms of units, they're actually quite bad. Um, well, actually no, they're actually, they're not, they're not the best, but they're not the worst in terms of the banner units. Obviously, the green banners are the worst, but um, their ability to defeat essentially um, Korean levy Korean guard swordsmen is kind of insane. So yes. And we're gonna continue to go down this hill and we're gonna essentially kill every one of them and gonna if I don't kill every one of them, I'm gonna have my um cavalry help out and destroy the rest of them. At this point, we're just chasing down the enemy, so nothing really interesting right there. Uh, we've won a great victory. The enemy pretty much lost their entire garrison with only 13 remaining. You're gonna ask for peace, which I'm gonna obviously reject. They basically only have two settlements left, and I'm, at this point, after a few seconds, they're only going to have one left. Once again, a lot of places in Japan are unhappy, which is, comes at no surprise. Once again, I'm trying to get my general to Japan, two generals to be exact, um, one of which is going to be on my navy, and the other one is going to be on land, and one of them is going to be, yeah. Helping out wherever it should help out. This army, um, this army is gonna be taking on Nobby, and I am more than tempted to auto resolve this battle. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna auto resolve this battle. Um, I'm gonna auto resolve, and to my surprise, I'm still taking casualties. Um, so that's a pain. That's a bummer. Six hundred loss. Holy God. If I were on the battlefield, I could have done better. But I'm gonna take those uh, casualty rates because one, my general has a logistics, which means it is gonna be easier for him to, um, yes, to replenish his numbers. And yes, that's that.
Um, we're also going to auto resolve this last siege, and then yeah. Um, oh, basically, one the only settlement left is north, south actually, South Ganyon. At this point, I'm just trying to build a lot of stuff. Or, in other words, I'm just trying to do stuff. We are going to try to move on as soon as possible, but um, a lot of stuff with provincial management. As we can see right here, um, the British and the Americans are pretty much at war with each other, the French are too far away to help, and the Dutch are down south. And I'm at war with the United States, which I'm going to ask for a peace agreement. Um, they, uh, they were at war with me because... Essentially, what happened was basically, um, basically what happened was the American the United States declared war on Britain, and Britain joined their war, and they called me as an ally, and I was thinking, uh, should I break the agreement? And I was like, yeah, no, we will not. We're, we'll keep the British as a buffer. And now I'm just like saying, okay, let's let's keep the peace with the United States. Uh, I don't really want to go with the war with the United States. And also, the United States is pretty, very friendly towards me, so that's pretty interesting. Um, with most of the Western powers are very friendly for some reason. Um, historically, it would just be the, the, the darn opposite. I don't know what the heck is going on. Once again, we are upgrading a lot of these provinces because I want to make uh, Korea into. Um, a pro a rich a rich country essentially <laughs> a rich um a rich place that I can get money from A lot of this, a lot of this stuff is pretty boring. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna mostly give them inns and um, build build up their castles, and in some cases, build up their uh, province levels. And the reason why I'm doing that is because inns not only gives money, but it also gives um, modernization to um, the province. So that's that's pretty good. And I'm also trying to increase the um, increase essentially. My modernization level, which is more than important. The Netherlands wants us to declare war on uh, Tosa Fuji, and um, they're going to join our war against. I didn't see that, <laughs> but I'm going to reject because I do not want the Netherlands to join any of my wars. Once again, on the next turn, a lot of people are unhappy. And yeah, um, I we've leveled up in terms of modernization, and now we are going for Western style army. Well, actually, no, we leveled up in modernization a long time ago. Um, we basically just researched modern ships, and now we can just get a, the ever victorious army. And so, for basically those who don't know, the ever victorious army is basically like um, essentially it was during the the Taiping Rebellion, the China, uh, because the okay, so basically, okay, here's the chronological events of what happened. First, it came the first Opium War, then the Taiping Rebellion, and then the second Opium War. And basically, what happened was after China got defeated by the British in the first Opium War, it needed to modernize, and the British and French were more than happy to provide military instructors. Kind of funny, but um, the British and French provided military instructors, and they helped out. They helped the Chinese against the Taiping. The, the rebels essentially and basically the ever victorious army was basically trained by Chinese and British um, military advisors and um, that's that um, yes that's that 
Um, at this point, I'm just trying to get the, the Modern Fleet, and for those who are interested, yes, I am going to be calling the My Modern Fleet the Beiyang Fleet. Um, because one, I there's going to be a lot of feet, fleets that I'm going to have, and it's also a pretty good name to call it because the Beiyang Fleet was actually an actual historical fleet. So yes, that's that. But anyway, we're just going to move on and take a lot more provinces. And yes, pray for the best. Uh, the British, the Americans are going at it with the British, which is great for me because I don't really care what happens. Um, I eventually will care, but that's a story for later. Um, the Joseon Kingdom decides to ask me for peace, 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 and peace is something I will not give to ya. And yeah, once again on the next turn, people are pretty unhappy with me. No surprise, I basically missed out on that little thing. I don't know what happened, but um, that was my mistake. Um, this is what happens when you have a lot of stuff and you forget that stuff happens. Um, as you can see, we're going to be attacking this mostly cavalry force, which is, for those who don't know by now, I have a way of dealing with it, and for those um, for those people that are wondering, you pretty much kind of know my way of dealing with it. Um, once again, I'm going to be firing mortars, rockets, at the enemy fortifications. And the enemy fortifications is basically an outer wall, an inner wall, and a moat, and that's it. It's basically literally like the settlement that we fought literally in in the beginning of this episode. It's basically an inner wall, outer wall, and that's it. Um, however, just with two more tiers, and that's it. And, and it's once again wooden, a wooden settlement. As you can see, that is why it's burning so quickly. Um, on to my right, sorry, my left. I have Manchu Lancers, Calvary, Manchu Calvary. Um, I have this wonderful army stack of um, white banner units, white border banner units to be exact. Um, once again, for those who don't know, you can tell they're border units because they're wearing red borders and another yellow border unit because, um, for, why not? Uh, the yellow border, you can tell it's a yellow border because it has a red border. And this is how I'm going to deal with all the cavalry that is literally in the settlement. I'm literally going to fire on it with artillery and mortars. Now, mortars do a lot more damage, but um, for some reason, today, rockets did more damage. And it comes at no surprise, and you can see eventually why. Not gonna lie, that was a lot of shaking, and that was a lot of pressure put on the enemy. But at this point, I'm gonna stop talking and let you guys watch. Needless to say, we're, our mortars are still raining down on the poor enemy. And yes, we're just killing a lot of them, as you can see by the dead piles of men. Um, although, not as much as I, I would expect. If I was using arm Armatron guns or any modern artillery in sh regular Shogun 2, all oh, everyone here would probably be dead by now. And so yes, that's that. Once again, at this point, more mortar rounds running in, and you can see mortar rounds do a lot more accurate damage, but they do do a lot of area damage, for those that know what I'm talking about. But yes, as you can see, a lot of dead, and um, <laughs> a pretty interesting battle, essentially. 
because the enemy has so much cavalry and they're not going to be sallying out, so that's a pretty good situation for me. At this point, I'm moving my artillery pieces to hit elsewhere on the front end, mostly because one... Um... Yeah. Rockets. Um, I'm eventually going to move my infantry in, and we're going to essentially at this point just go through the walls. Actually, no, we're going to go through the gate, and then we're just going to kill everyone. Um, yeah. Um, they only are firing some arrows at my guys, but, um... Nothing much I can do about that. Um, the second we have gone through the walls, it's basically game over for them. Yeah, as you can see, we basically are just coming through and we're gonna kill not a lot of people because artillery has done most of the job. I have to admit right there, artillery did most of the job. But our mortars are still raining down and our artillery pieces, which are not out of ammo, are gonna be raining down some more hell on the enemy. Um, the enemy at this point has a lot of cavalry units that are basically um, de demoralized, diminished, and they're not in the fighting spirit. And my guys are just gonna rush into this spear unit, and we're gonna and we're gonna end the spear unit pretty quickly. I'm not gonna lie, this battle was pretty interesting in the sense that um, it was pretty funny because the enemy just clumped a lot of enemy units in the center. And basically, what happened is just like fire rockets and mortars at them and basically um, caused a lot of panic. And then after that, nothing really much happened. Um, my after I just sent in my infantry after that and basically, yeah. At this point, um, the siege is pretty much over. Um, I just have to take uh, and kill the rest of the artillery pieces, which are still alive, which is a pain. It just takes time. And not to mention this one unit of militia that is just moving straight towards, uh, tr straight towards me. And I'm just gonna end them pretty quickly by essentially uh, mastering them. And this is pretty much not even a fight at this point. I just have to swing my blades in their general direction and two or three fall, and that's it. Um, needless to say, I've pretty much taken the siege, and now we're just gonna go through the second tier of the walls and pray for the best. Uh, yes. I kind of find it pretty funny when my men are running into a fire and going through the fire and then going on to the second tier of the wall. I just think it's just pretty funny for me. Anyway, I've won the settlement and we've only lost 71 dudes, which is pretty impressive uh, cons considering the fact that. Considering the fact that most settlements take like what um, at least a hundred guys, but 72 is pretty impressive for me And I'll be taking those casualty rates um, Especially if the entire enemy cavalry just got wiped out essentially at the beginning the enemy didn't sally out Which is pretty much their mistake um, if they sallied out they pretty much stood a bigger chance because I technically can't have um, Stopped every one of them. So that's gonna be a problem Um I don't know, at this point uh, in Japan, I don't really know who to do, declare war on. 
Um, because the Netherlands, the United States, and the British are pretty friendly towards me. And technically, uh, the general rule of thumb is that the second you declare war on one, the rest who have alliance or something will pretty much declare war on you. So yes, don't know who to declare war on, and I'm at this point I'm in sort of a limbo. So I don't really know who to declare war on. But I am going to be sending my general to Japan, and that is going to be pretty much it for this episode. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one. Now before you leave, I would like to thank you very much for watching this video. I would be honored if you could like and subscribe to the channel. Remember, more videos are coming out, so it is a good idea to click on that notification button. Anyways, have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.